Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse, and I'm just going to do a demonstration of how to use the dynamic graph feature of the Casio Prism. And also the color of the functions is really very helpful when you're trying to get students to understand how the coefficients in a function graph equation impact what the graph looks like. So as you can see, we're in the menu, so I'm going to arrow down. We're going to start with graph, so I'm going to choose number five graph hit execute brings me to the graph menu you'll notice I'm in the prism so I have color so every time I enter a an equation it will show up on the graph in a different color so we're gonna kinda work with parent functions so I'm gonna choose the sine function first so we're gonna do sine of x so that's my first graph I'm gonna hit execute if I were to choose f6 under the draw I will see my parent function, so you can see uh, I've got this, and my window is pretty good, so we're going to leave it the way that it is. I could change the window by doing shift window and change uh, my x and y, min and max, but I'm good with the way it is, so we're going to exit back out. So there's my parent function, it's in blue, and now what I want to do is work with uh, coefficients. So I'm going to enter um, the standard form of the sine graph. So to do that in Casio uh, Prism, I actually have some built-in functions. So we're going to go to F4, and again I'm in the graph menu, F4 tool, and you'll see that I now have some built-in. That's under F3, and here's some built-in equations. So we're going to work with this sine one down here. So I'm going to arrow down, hit execute. Now I have both graphs, and so if I hit draw right now, you'll see the parent functions in blue and my um, standard form is in red. And so when I hit F6 for draw, I'm going to see both graphs. Now, they're not lined up. That means that at some point I have um, my standard form must have some different values different from the parent function. So let's go back and look at our functions. What is this parent function actually? So sine has nothing in front of it, which means it's a 1, so maybe I want to actually, um, what is the current value of a in my original parent function? It might be a 1, so if I, I just put a 1 in there so that they can see a is 1. And what is my x value? It also, which would be this b here, is probably a 1. So let's go down and hit execute. All right. C does not seem to exist. So obviously I have a 1 where A is, a 1 where B is, but C doesn't exist in my parent function, which means it must have a value of C. So how do I actually change this function here to match this? I'm going to go into Modify, which I talked about in a previous thing. So we're going to choose F5. And you'll see there's my functions again, but this time the red is showing up here and it's telling me the current values. So C is 2, which is why this particular red line is not matching the parent function, because it doesn't match the original. So let's arrow down and change C to be 0, and let's see if we can actually make it match the parent function. And since we're on top of each other, now I know that the parent function has C coefficient is equal to 0. Well, that's pretty neat, so now I make that understanding. So now how do these in my standard form of my equation impact the, the graph. So this is what the parent function's values are for a, b, and c. So what would happen, we kind of already saw it happen when we changed c, it, it kind of shifted it. So when it was 1, let's go back, when c was 1, it shifted the parent function. And it looks like it kind of shifted it to the left. So how does that match up to the value of c? Well, here was the parent function, and then we shifted so when c was 1, we shifted to the left at like negative 1. So continuing with that, let's, and again, I'm in modify right now, so I can do this by changing my step. The current value that's being modified is c. So I can uh, change it just by choosing my error. I've made it a 2. And what does that do? Oh, it shifted it again to the left, too. So when it's a positive change, I seem to go to the left. When C shifts my parent function to the left when it's positive. So making a conjecture, maybe it shifts to the right when I go negative. So, so let's make C be something negative. So 
Let's make it be negative 3. So let's make a guess. This is a great activity to do with your students. So make a guess. Is it going to go, we think negative is going to move to the right. 3, 3 from where? So its original point was at 0. So let's see if it goes to 3 to the right from that original 0. So let's hit execute. And have I gone 3 to the right? So here's where I was. Oh, it looks like I'm right at the same. So kind of, let's make it be negative 1. Let's see if it moves it 1 to the right. And it does. So C is shifting. Right? So then you can continue using modify, looking at each variable one at a time, which we've already uh, kind of talked about in a previous video. So what I want to now do is say you can take this same idea, modifying, where you can change each variable one step at a time, clicking it, and manually enter a number, or you can use the dynamic feature of the Casio prism and graphing calculators and go into the dynamic graph which allows you to do it dynamically, where it's going to move them dynamically, not just one at a time, but dynamically. So you'll notice when we come back into our menu, to the right we've got this dynagraph. So let's, we can either arrow over or we could have just hit six, and then we're going to hit execute. Notice, same two functions I was working with before, the parent here in blue and the uh, standard form in red. And I'm going to, I'm in dynamic function now, so I want to make sure I select both. So under F1, I'm going to select my first graph, hit Execute, oops, Exit, didn't need to hit Execute, sorry about that, and I'm going to go down and hit Execute and select here. So I've got both graphs selected, they're going to graph again um, when I hit that. When I hit Execute this time, it says I have, it's going to the dynamic variables. So right now, currently, C is the one that's going to dynamically change. And it's showing me the current values. We, have, we wanted A to be 1 to match the parent function. B was 1 to match the parent. Well, now we're going to dynamically change, meaning I don't have to do it myself by hand. I can use the calculator to dynamically. Current value is negative 1 because that's where it was when we left it. But since I'm in dynamic, we want to make sure we've selected C. Under F2 set, I can change how it's going to dynamically move. So I can give it starting values and end, and it's going to go up and down between these negative 5 and 5. This seems, this seems like a reasonable um, change, just so we can see what's happening with C. And so I'm OK with that, so I'm going to hit OK, Execute. I can change the speed, so that's F3. I can make it go fast, slow, normal. So right now, I think we're going to just let it go normal. So that looks good. So we're going to have a a normal. I can make it also stop and go, but I like kind of normal. I want to see it dynamically moving, so we're going to hit execute. And notice now I have this option under F6 that's Dyna. This means it's going to change the currently selected variable, C, the coefficient C, which we kind of already made conjectures is shifting the uh, graph, so the phase shift. And now we're going to hit F6 and see it dynamically move. So you'll see it's kind of making a video here. And we're going to, it takes a little while, it's generating a, a basically a, a moving, a dynamic movement. And now we see it, but now it's automatically changing. And I can visually see as the graph is shifting. So it's shifting. Now I'm going positive. I seem to be moving to the left. OK, so it's shifting. The phase shift is with C. And I can watch that, and it's great if you started off your class you have this dynamically moving as students are coming in. You can have them make some conjectures, and you can go back into the modify graph and do it one at a time once they've made some conjectures. So the dynamic feature is excellent because it kind of shows things all at once and, and, and as like a movie. So let's let's stop that, and let's. So all I did to stop it was hit the AC and on button. Stops the movement. I'm going to hit exit to get back. Let's choose a different variable. So first we're going to change C back to the parent function value that it has, which we determined was 0. And hit execute. And now let's, let's see what happens when we move A. So now notice my dynamic variable is still C. I have to change it. So I've moved it to the A I want. F1 selects A as now my dynamic variable. I can change the setup by choosing F2. And again, right now it's going to go from negative 5 to 5 and going by increments of 1. So that works for me. We won't change that. 
Speed will keep the same. I could change it if I want. We'll keep the same. But now when I hit dynamic, A is going to be changing. So you could have students make some conjectures, or you could have this just plain. So again, it's generating a new dynamic graph. It's going to show my parent function in blue and my uh, dynamically moving function in standard form. So now it's A that's moving. And notice, what's that doing too? So I'm not shifting like C did. What looks like happened is the height of my graph, the amplitude, seems to be moving. So A seems to control the height, the amplitude of my graph. And again, they can see dynamically and make some conjectures. And you could go back to graph and modify one thing at a time. So let's stop it again. We get AC clear. Exit so we get back. And we can again change the dynamic to B. So let's change the value of 1 back to what it is in the parent function. Now we're B. And again, let's set by selecting F1. We're going to select B as my dynamically moving variable. I'm going to keep the setup the same, negative 5 to 5, so we're going to be okay with that. Speed, we're going to keep the same. This time, we're going to hit it, and B is going to change. So what's happened so far? A seemed to change the height, the amplitude of the function. C shifted it left, right, so just making a conjecture with the students. Maybe they say we, it's going to squish it, make it bigger. Maybe, who knows what they guess, but this is the great thing about the calculator. They can make a conjecture, and then you can immediately test out that conjecture. So let's see what B does what, how do, when we move it dynamically. How is B impacting that graph of the sine curve? Oh, so the red again is the dynamically moving graph. When B was 1, we know it matches up to the parent function. So here it is at 1. And what's it doing? It seems to have more curves, if you want to think of it that way. So the period, the length of one cycle seems to get smaller as we uh, increase B. So this was just to, let's stop this, to show you how to use the dynamic graph. Let's hit exit. Go back to menu. So the dynagraph, the graph, dynamic graphing allows you to move the variables, um, the coefficients, very quickly and kind of create a movie and so that students can make conjectures. And then you can go back to the graph menu and, and work with them again and modify to move them one step at a time. So kind of using these conjunction really helps students get an understanding of how coefficients impact a graph, compare parent functions. And again, in the prism, it's nice because you have the colored lines that you can use. But you can do the graph and the dynagraph in our other graphing calculators as well. You just don't have the colored um, lines that you do with the prism.